First came the longer 10 watt laser. Then seemingly out of nowhere, Longer released the 20 watt laser. And now Longer's come out with the B1 30 watt laser. I'm really curious to get into here and see if they've upgraded any of the style and the looks of this laser. Okay, let's go ahead and open this up. I'm gonna lay everything out so you can get a look at it and then we'll put it together. Well, there it is. There's the uh, longer B1 30 watt laser and they have upgraded the style. They went from that extruded aluminum look to this nice new sleek look and it's not heavy at all. It's very lightweight, so it's a lightweight aluminum. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this all together and I'm gonna time it. I'll come back and let you know how long it took. Before I start putting this together, I just want to point this out. They've actually gone to having the steps on their bags, kind of like a tether did. That's awesome. Great job, Longer. Great job. All right, first thoughts. I got it done in 24 minutes and 22 seconds. Almost 23 seconds. So not bad. I had to go back and I skipped a, skipped a step. And the reason I skipped a step was because the directions do not flow, but that's okay, that was my fault. You can see it says one, two, well three's over here. I went down to five, six, and then realized I'd missed a step, went back to three and four, then did five, six, seven, and eight. Boom, done. Only took me about five extra minutes. Before we get started, I wanna go into some of the features, so let's go ahead and do that right now. As I said before, it's no longer extruded aluminum posts, it's actually a very sturdy machine, but it's lightweight. Bold move by Longer is this power cable going directly into the machine. It now hooks up via this cable to the air pump. They've done away totally with the Y cable. The laser head has a strong 33 to 36 watt optical output power. It has a six core laser technology in it. The B1 has a thinner and longer focal length of 50 millimeters, but its cutting capacity is 20% stronger compared to other lasers. It can cut 25 millimeter basswood and 50 millimeter black acrylic by multiple passes. It has a large work area of 450 millimeters by 440 millimeters. The B1 is equipped with a new 32-bit motherboard, which allows engraving speeds up to 36,000 millimeters per minute. The new silent stepper motors help to reduce noise during operation. The air assist pump can automatically be turned on and off through light burn. It now has X and Y axis limit switches. It now has eight different safety feature protections which I hope I don't have to use. And those are move, flame, offline, motionless, security lock, eye protection, emergency stop button, and zero reset. It has a kickstand for focusing the laser, which they are calling a focus position bar. Finally, I just want you to know that it claims to be able to be used with 1,000 plus materials. All right, it's time to do some testing on this thing. What I want to do first is do some engraving things, and then once we get that done, we're going to go over to cutting some wood. To see what this thing can engrave, we're going to use some of this uh, three millimeter plywood. It's birch plywood, and I've got the uh, test all set up. By the way, if you're looking to find a test so you can test your wood cutting and your wood engraving, you can do that right from Lightburn. There's a bunch of videos out there on YouTube that show you how to do it. Uh, you don't have to go find one yourself, but I will include one in the link down below just in case you don't want to make one up. Now that we've got the engraved test done, and we'll talk about that at the end, let's go ahead and do a cut test. So that's all we're gonna do. We're gonna stick with cutting and engraving on the three millimeter plywood. It's birch plywood. Uh, it's a good representation of what you're gonna get when you're doing projects. So 
After we're done with the engraving and the cutting, I'll go into the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'll give you my pros and cons of the machine, and you will see where it fares, and I'll give you my opinion of the overall machine. All right, let's start with the engraving right here. You can see it actually did really well on the engraving. I did set it too high. I should have probably done half of this with the lower powers. Uh, but overall, it came out well. Right in the center of this is right where the engraving should have been. Uh, so I know exactly what I'm going to do uh, when I set it to when I'm doing my engraving on my projects. So overall engraving, it did very well. It was very fast too. So uh, that's a plus. That's the big thing about these stronger lasers. You can, you can engrave faster, you can cut faster, you can get done quicker, you can pump out more and you can make more money. That's the key to the, the stronger laser. Do you absolutely need a 30 watt laser? Better know what you're doing and how fast you want to get done with it and you want to pump stuff out. You may want to supplement your 20 or your 10 watt laser. So, yeah, it's all up to what you need in your business. All right, let's go over to the cutting. The cutting, wow. I'm going to have to say this thing cut beautifully. It There's no charring on this. And I think that has to do with the automated air assist, which we'll talk about in a second. So, I, I was really impressed. Like I said, there's no charring on the front or the back of this. Uh, I did set the letters too high. I had it at 9,000 at 30% for the laser, and it, it cut through. But there's no charring on the back. Here's the back of it right there. See what I'm saying? All right. Overall, I think it cut and engraved beautifully. So, like I promised you, let's go ahead and get into the good, the bad, and the ugly. The first con I want to talk about is air integration. Okay, this is the laser head. You can see that the air tube right here comes down the side of it and then goes into here. This is integrated into the laser, but I would rather see something flat to it without this where the tube would just plug into it like they are doing on other laser heads. We'll talk about the other part of the air assist and in the pros. The next thing I want to talk about is how loud this thing is. They must have taken taken a turbo prop fan from a from an A10 to put it in this thing. This thing is loud. I, I wish they would figure out some way to muffle the noise from this. Uh, there has to be other fans that are quieter. Uh, I understand you have to have airflow and make sure you got to keep the laser cool, but this thing is loud. You heard it throughout the uh, the video. All right, let's talk about this power head and how it's mounted on here. It's mounted on with four screws back here, but they're, they're about a half inch long and they've got these plastic parts to it. And it lets it do this. I don't know, it's designed that way. It's part of the design. I guess it's because it doesn't want to be too rigid, but in my book, I don't like it. It, it, it annoys me and I'm not sure why, but I'm gonna call that a negative. I'm not sure I'm digging the power hookup for the air assist. I've seen seen this on a lot of lasers and it's not exclusive to the longer machine here, but it's this lockout that they have with the keys. I don't understand that. Why am I locking out this laser? Uh, yeah, it would be great if it was a powerful laser that could drill through a, a wall or something like that so people couldn't use it when I'm not around, but I, I don't know, maybe maybe people lock it out because they're kids or whatever, but you can just unplug it. I'm just you can take power and put it over somewhere else. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if that's a, that's a, that's not a negative, it's not a positive. I just need to point that out because it bugs me that it's there. I'm not really sure. Here's another thing a lot of lasers do, and they put these ports on the top, here, here, and here. When you're in a workshop, there's going to be dust, there's going to be all sorts of stuff, and it's going to get down in here. I really wish they would move these to the side. Now talking about this right here, you'll notice that Longer does not have a screen here for, for using the SD card and I, I'm just speechless that it doesn't, that, it, that is standard on a lot of things, all their other ones do. So I'm, I guess it's because it can be used with Wi-Fi. And talking about the Wi-Fi, I could never get it to work. And I don't understand why. It seems like it'd be really easy, but I just couldn't get it to find the laser. It's asking for my Wi-Fi, but it says the Wi-Fi, you can't put any numbers in there. It's letters only. And for some reason, 
I've got numbers in my Wi-Fi name, so I could never get it hooked up. Okay, that's all the cons I have for this machine. I'd like to talk about the good things, and there's a few of them. So sit back, relax, and enjoy what I have to say about this machine. First, let's talk about the beauty. This thing is a massive upgrade to the longer Ray 5. It is beautiful. It's all aluminum, it's sturdy. I, I just can't say enough about the upgrade and the looks that they've gotten for this thing. The Smart Air Assist. I've seen it on one other machine, but this is the first one I've gotten it to work with. It turns on and off as you laser and you control it with light burn. That's a great upfit. I know, you're wanting to keep going back to that no screen thing, but they do have an app that you can use. It's an MKS laser app, and it works pretty well for this. The app lets you move the laser all over the place. It lets you start engraving. You can even take a picture off your phone and engrave it straight to the machine. So it's kind of neat. The addition of limit switches really is a game changer for longer. They haven't had those in the past. This right here works perfectly. This is, this is what you need if you want to do repeatable cuts where you have some sort of a jig on your thing and it goes back to zero, you can always go from the zero point and just do repeatable cuts every single time. I don't know if you've noticed, but they've integrated all their wires into the rail system. They go through the rail system and through the machine. I thought this was a pretty good design and it kept the cable management uh, in check. I'm gonna show you something right now. Don't freak out because this is kind of neat. It has levelers on the feet to help level it. Who'd have known that would have been kind of a cool feature. Another pro that I found, I, I, I don't think it matters to a lot of people, but it does to me. This thing has eight safety features. You know, it has a fire detector. It has, you know, tilt control. It has all this stuff. And it does matter to me, I think, because I am very accident prone uh, when it comes to stuff. I, I don't pay attention. I've got uh, basically ADHD. I, I do stuff without paying attention to it. So when I have a chance to have a safety feature that helps me create a safer environment, I welcome it. I think that's, that's very underappreciated in the laser field. And last but not least, I really liked how well this connected the light burn. It was super easy to connect right up. I turned it on, boom, it found it. I installed it, it worked great. And I was off to the races. Now I'm gonna do more experimenting in the future with this thing and see, see if I like it. I'm gonna give it about a seven out of 10 overall. Um, I, I've still got to, I wanna cut a few projects with it and see how it works. And when I do, I'll come back and do another video on a project just to show you how well it works. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, review. If you're interested in learning more about this, I'll put a link down in the description. You can go check it out or just ask questions in the comments section. That'll do too. All right, well, I appreciate you stopping by. And until next video, stay cool.